nerds what's up today we have another bookish vlog for you for air of fire by sarah j mass we're gonna go through my annotations for this if you haven't seen this series yet i'm doing these for all of the sarah j mass throne of glass books and we are also doing live shows on mine and britney's channel every other book and we're doing it's called the tog read along which is all we have a twitter and everything so down below you can check out we do live shows once a month the live show for air of fire already passed but queen of shadows will be on september 19th at 11 30 a.m pst and that's going to be on britney's channel so if you're interested in joining us for the rest of the live show so far then that's where you can find those i'll also link the air of fire live show up above in case you're curious but this is going to be spoiler full for basically the entire series because i'm going to talk about like things that you're seeing in this book that relate to later books and such like that and yeah so let's get right on. Ba -ba -da, ba -da, ba -ba. all right here we go the map as always part one air of ash so we get our first annotation on page six and this is orange which is like world building plot building etc so queen mave of the fey mave knew everything and as was expected when you were older than dirt and then on the next page we have a purple annotation which is favorite stuff Wendelin, a land of myths and monsters, of legends and nightmares made flesh. Coming to page 16, we have some more world building. All fae possessed a secondary animal form. Selena was currently in hers, her mortal human body, as animal as the birds wheeling above. And so this is where we find out that basically Selena's human form is her animal form. Then on page four, we finally meet Manon. So I put a little heart. I'm so excited for Manon. I love her. Coming to page 34, some more world building. After Manon left the Crokin's corpse in that snow blasted mountain pass, she'd taken the cloak as a trophy, her red cloak, and still wore it over a hundred years later. So this later. is us getting a little bit more insight into the fact that like Crokin's, which is another type of witch, and the Iron Teeth, which uh, Manon is a blue blood Iron Teeth, they have problems with each other and as we know we will find out later that manon is also Crokin, and i'm very excited for when we finally find that out it doesn't have and i have some blue annotation here for the first time which is for things that make me sad in her bones in her blood and breath and soul she was so so tired talking to anyone was too taxing and this is selena talking about herself and she's just going through that hard depression right now the little folk had always known her being a um selena small gifts left at campsites like in the first book it brought me back then moving on to page 47, we have our first pink, which is things that I love, like romance stuff, things like that. But that didn't stop her from loving him as she still did, invisible and secret ever since she first laid eyes on him six years ago. And this is Sorsha talking about Dorian, which Sorsha is a healer in the castle and dorian is obviously the prince we get talking meant building some sort of relationship she'd had enough friends enough of them dying too and this is again selena just going through some serious one depression. thing that i've realized while doing these vlogs which is just totally filming related is that inevitably when i am like going through the pages and there's a bunch of pages where there's nothing on there and i'm still filming so i finally hit pause inevitably the next page has something to show you and i'm just like what are the chances of this happening every single time on I page 60 i put with purple i wish you to become who you were born to be to become queen and this was manon's grandmother or no mave talking to selena saying that she wants her to become queen but then i wrote why does mave want her to be powerful because i don't really understand that like mave we know wants power for herself so why does she want her to be powerful i don't understand and we have our first red annotation which is stuff that makes me angry faster than she could sense faster than anything had a right to be he so punched put her some perspective on why freaking rowan punched aelin he calls her Aelin and she gets mad at him for calling her that because she still wants to go by Selena because she still can't accept that she's the queen. She says, Faye like you make me understand the King of Ardalan's actions a bit more, I think, which is just like, he's literally slaughtering and has slaughtered so many Faye. It's such a fucked up thing to say. And so he There's her. a lot of sad stuff in this book, but she's been running so, she'd been running for so long that she didn't know what it was to stand and fight. And this is talking about Selena again. Then we said, you didn't need a weapon at all when you were born one. This is again, is Manon. She was talking about how black beaks are made to be deadly. Like they have the, the 
claws and the teeth and the all the things and she was born to be deadly to page 84 we learned that the fae had mates an unbreakable bond deeper than marriage that lasted beyond death selena called asks if they're half breeds and lucas sti stiffened but flashed a smile as he said only the pure-blooded fae call us that we prefer demi fae but yes most of us were born to mortal mothers and with the fathers with the fathers unaware this they is the stuff us. that makes me think sarah j mass was attempting to talk a little bit about race by using fae and like what our society views and has viewed about race and i think that it was almost it, it's like subtle but at the same time being so over the top not subtle like it's interesting it's it's a hard thing to do i think i i don't know how i would ever manage it so i'm not saying that it's bad i think that it's just a really hard thing to try to do in she still novel. had to punish her second this is coming back to manon so she gives she forces her second to take three unblocked blows one to the gut one to the ribs and one to the face and this is because Asterin did something that Manon wasn't allowing, and I can't remember what she did because a lot of them do a lot of things. Oh, she fought with one of the yellow Whereas ones. the Crokins and the Iron Teeth are like separate types of witches. The Black Beasts also have three subsets. The Yellow Legs, the Blue Bloods, and another one that I can't remember. So then on page 111, I just underlined, you can kill me or torture me or throw me off a cliff, but I'm done for today. And this is when Selena and Rowan are like doing their thing and training and he's trying to push her and she is not ready to be pushed yet. So then we come to Kale for the first time, and Kale is talking to his father, who we hate. Though I wonder what manner of man you truly are if you do not honor your bargain, says his father. I wonder what your motive was then in sending your woman to Wendelin. Yet for the oath breaker, the liar, is what he's calling Selena. Then Kale says his father's not just flared. What purpose then did his father have in wanting him to return so quickly since he obviously is angry with Kale? The father says, oh, there's no price, but I think I like the idea of you owing me a favor. Ew. And then this I just thought was cool. This is on page 125. Manon blinked, the muscles behind her golden eyes, pulling down the clear film that would shield her vision from the wind. Without it, they'd fly like mortals, squinting and streaming tears all over the place. Okay, we love Emrys. I put that he's a little father figure because she has this huge black eye and she's like, it's none of your business. And he says, it's my business when you come into my kitchen. Malachi is Emrys's mate and malachi's grin faded my mate works too much as it is you don't add to that burden understand emma growled his name but selena shrugged i don't want to bother with any of you and then luca says which is the little boy not little boy but the young man who works in the kitchen it is our duty honoring life's missions to make sure our families are cared for especially our mates and then emrys chuckles and says and it makes you are a thorn in my side a possessive territorial beasts it's a little sad thing because of terrison Selena had no stories to tell. All the legends of Terrison were lost to her, and only fragments were strewn through her memories like rubble. Which just makes me sad. Come back to Sorsha and Dorian. Sorsha's eyes twinkled just a bit in that way they did when she was amused and tried hard not to be as she talked I honestly him. really love Sorsha. I'm really sad that she's the one who dies in this book because I feel like she's honestly my ship for Dorian. Like, I think they worked so well together. She also reminds me a lot of what's her face from Tower of Dawn. And, like, I feel like Sarah J. Mass really wanted to bring Sorsha back. So she brought, like, her character into this other character. And, like, yeah, I, I think that it worked well. So we also have Adian now. And Adian is um, Aelin's cousin. And he is assumed to be on the King of Arlen's side. And Kale decides to start following him because he's being a little sketchy freak. And so Adian and the cloaked figure slipped into a crumbling building as Kale is watching him. And we also get some why information about Adian thanks to my heritage because he's part fey. My senses are sharper. And I thought the ring smelled strange so, so I had a replica So in this mate. scene is where we find out that Adian is not in fact being controlled by the king of Arlen, but instead is just faking it in order to maintain stuff so that he can like spy on the king of Arlen, which we love. He's on Aelin's side. And there's this scene, there's actually a few scenes between Dor, not Dorian, between Rowan and Aelin where Aelin is being pushed again by Rowan and Rowan is like getting her to do more and more and more. There's a part where he bites her and it's like super really aggressive and it's weird. And then I put that in red. And then there's also a scene where he is like threatening to whip her and she says if you ever take a whip to me I will skin you alive. And like that scene is just so like you know that she's not fucking with this like 
I'm not kidding, and if you even try to joke with me about this, I will fuck with you back because she is not having any of that. And then in this scene, it like comes to this big climactic moment where she screams that her best friend is dead and I am left with my own worthless life. And just again with the depression-y, sad, sad parts. So then we also get some more information from Rowan about power and like because Aelin obviously have fi- has firepower but she hasn't like learned to control it yet and that's what they're working through and we get this information that those with stronger gifts such as Aelin it can take hours to hit the bottom of the barrel with with regards to like how much power they have within them and to summon their powers to full strength so they can like dig deep within themselves and like churn this power so that they'll have it later and like he was also talking about how you can burn out if you don't tunnel through it in order to make it bigger I, magic okay my favorite freaking scene in the whole book is when manon decides that abraxos is hers so she watches this giant w- wyvern who she's been wanting this whole time he's the biggest of the male beasts and all this stuff she's been having his eye her eye on him and he fights with the prey Rivern, which are the ones who have been like they're basically the fighting pit one who never gets to really be great and that one is like clearly wants to live and so Manon held up a hand and again the world stopped Manon eyes still upon the beast said he's mine and oh my god I just freaking love that she picks him and like their their relationship Abraxos and Manon is my favorite thing ever like I love it so much I don't mark anything for quite a while we're now on page 224 and Manon is second guessing her second she says are you her spy meaning her mother the matron or my second and Astrin says I serve now there's two Okay, they stopped. So she says, are you her spy or my second? And she says, I serve you. And Manon reminds her, she's your matron. And again, Astrin says, I serve you. And I just really love the like respect and trust that the 13 have with each other. So then I, on the next page, have some in red. The blood tasted rotten as if had it had curdled and festered inside a corpse for days. And it was too dark for human blood. So this is Manon noticing that the things that are coming out of the mountain, like the goats and stuff that she would normally eat, obviously something's wrong with them and she doesn't know what is wrong with them, but like, no, that's not good. And she doesn't want Abraxas eating any of that, and she doesn't want her 13. So then we get some of description of Abraxas. So each of the scars, the chipped teeth, the broken claws, the mutilated tail, they were the weren't the markings of a victim. Oh no, they were the trophies of a survivor. Okay, finally, page 235, I have my first funny line. He shot left to pinch or poke to hit or hit her, and she whirled, slamming down his arm with an elbow and whacking him upside the head with her other hand. He stopped dead and blinked a few times. She smirked at him. He bared his teeth in a feral, petrifying grin. Oh, you'd better run now. When he lunged, she shot through the trees. And this is Rowan and Aelin finally starting to play with each other instead of only hating each other. Another cute line from Sorsha. It could all go to hell tomorrow, but she had to know what it was like just for a little while to belong to someone to be wanted and cherished. We also get a line from Dorian that says, My mother never admitted who my father was. And I wrote, Oh No, I wrote, Faye! Because... Because we Faye. also get this scene where there are creepy people hanging out and like maybe following Adian and Kale. So there's emblazoned on its on it in dark thread was a reverend the royal sigil. I don't know these men, Kale said. I've never seen that uniform. So obviously the king is not trusting of Kale we anymore. We also finally figure out that they think it's a spell that made the magic disappear in Rifthold. And I think that we'll get more information about that later in the book. We get one of my favorite scenes with Abraxos and Manon where Abraxos is, is just chilling on the cliff and he's like sniffing some flowers and like just living his best life. She's like offering him meat and she's like, is it not fresh enough? He moved to sniff some white and yellow flowers. This was a nightmare. You can't really like flowers, she says. Again, those dark eyes shifted her to her, blinked once. I most certainly do, he seemed to say. And I put that with a blue underline. And then right after that, um, he hadn't hurt her, hadn't fled. This is Abraxos. 
He pulled on the chain, shaking his head again and again as they re- neared the cavernous black door where the sounds of the reverends and men reached them. But he did go in. She didn't pity him because she pitied nothing, but she couldn't stop thinking about it. Because obviously he has some fear regarding this scary area where he was tortured his whole life. So then we get the first scene where Manon flies with Abraxos and the cry that Abraxos let out as they entered the Hall of Clouds as he leveled out and caught a lightning fast current carving a pathway through it. She had not understood what it was like for him to live his entire life underground chained and beaten and crippled until then until she heard that noise of undiluted unyielding joy and until she echoed it because their relationship is so great Ah, i love pets (laughs) so we meet one of rowan's like group the five males that he works with Maeve with and Gabrielle's attention darted between her and Rowan his nostrils flaring he was smelling her and I wrote mates because I think that that's what he's smelling so then we get this scene where Emrys shows Selena this beautiful knife that his mate Malachi bought him and the hilt was engraved with lotus blossoms and then he Malachi says I got it from a merchant from the southern continent it came all the way from El- Elway the numbness snapped And it was such a violent crack that she was surprised they didn't hear it. And it's just more depressing and then, shit and then emrys comes yelling at rowan i see her slipping away bit by bit because you shove her down when she so desperately needs someone to help her back up did you know that evelyn ash river was my friend says emrys she fighting to convince your queen that demi fay had a place in your realm help her if not for her sake then at least for what she represents what she could offer all of us you included a better world because emrys figured out that he, she's aelin even though she didn't want anyone to Then we get another scene with Rowan teaching Selena about her magic. You are in control now, Rowan said. You are its master. She had never been in control. Even as Selena, control had been an illusion. Other masters had held her reins. You are the keeper of your own fate. Rowan said softly from the shore as if he knew exactly what was flowing through her head. So this is the scene where Rowan decided that it would be a good idea to put Luca in chains and put him out in the middle of the ice and make Selena figure out how to release him with fire on the ice without making him drown under the ice. So then Luca says, I've, I'll forgive every awful thing you said earlier if we can go eat something right now. It smells awful in here. She could master this. She could master herself again. The well inside of her filled up and she pushed back, willing only that thread to squeeze free and into the ice. She spooled the thread of power back into herself, into that well, and was suddenly cold. Please tell me you brought food, Luca said again. Is that why you came? Rowan promised you snacks. I'm a growing boy, he wins when he looked at Rowan, and you don't say no to him. And then, all of a sudden, we see a giant red eye staring up at her from underneath the ice, and things go to hell. Rowan and Selena figure it out, and they save Luca, and everything is handy hunky-dory. But then, when she, when everyone's safe and done, Selena says to Rowan, If you ever endanger anyone else the way you did today, I will kill you. We find out that she's talking about Nehemia. I told her I would not help, so she orchestrated her own death. She thought that the death would spur me into action. Now, during that argument where she told Rowan that she would kill him if he ever did anything like that again, she realizes that during that time, she had left burned handprints into his chest. She'd burned right through the tattoo on his left arm. And then he said, you do not apologize for defending the people you care about. So, Selena asks Emrys for a story of this red-eyed beast that they saw. And he says that it claimed to have been born in another world. Mighty Fey Warrior challenged it. And it was during the Balg Wars... It could remember the golden ring he bore, the one who scarred the right eye, but not what he looked like. She might have given in to the urge to look had Rowan not reached for his glass of water because she realizes that she's seen a gold ring before and she thinks it might have been Rowan. So then we find out that Selena could heal yourself, you know, heal me too, nothing major, but you have that gift. And he says it's the drop of water affinity inherited from Mab. Moving line. on to part two of Era Fire, we get this conversation between Adian and Kale. And Adian says that I will deny her nothing. And we know that Adian and Selena are distant cousins. That was like pretty normal to marry. So Kale asks him, like, 
do you want to be king? Like, what would you do? Like, what is that worth to you? And Aiden says that if she asked me, I would not refuse her. And Kale says that's not an answer. Even Aiden was aware that he could be king. But this was Ren who asked, not Kale. And basically, like, they're having this conversation to see, like, what, what is Aiden's end goal here? We're talking about Aiden's soldiers. Aiden made sure that they believed he would fight and die for them. Thus, they would fight and die for him. And Kale was afraid, but not for himself. He was afraid of he, what would come when Aiden and Aelin were reunited. Because, of course, Kale still can't stop thinking about the kingdom that Dorian technically will have one day. But currently, the king of Ardalan has. And the king of Ardalan is a horrible person. And he was afraid of what they would do to his kingdom. And now, we finally get, on page 316, some information about the towers. Which is how we think that the spell happened. So there are three towers that were built. And the that is also the perimeter of where magic stops. And so we think that that's how the king did it. So then, Manon goes to the Stygian spiders in order to get silk to fix Abraxas's rings. And the spider mused, sister, I suppose we are sisters, you and I, two faces of the same dark coin from the same dark matter, sisters in spirit, if not in flesh, because they're both made from the vow. And when we find the Crokin who can undo it, this spell that was made on the land in order to make it unbearable, which is why the blue bloods, uh, the blood, um, iron teeth don't have land, then she would enjoy the bloodletting. But what we, she doesn't know yet is that she's a Crokin. So then the Stygian spider tells this story that a merchant came by a few years ago and deposed, he was deposed by a young woman who with wine red hair who now calls herself the High Queen. And then we also find out that person was a former shapeshifter. And Manon steals some silk, because why wouldn't you? Then after she fixes Abraxas' wings with the silk that she stole, they are now time to go across the very scary drop that Abraxas has to fly through. And he was looking at the crossing and then back at her, wide-eyed, petrified, utterly petrified, useless, stupid, cowardly beast. He says, if you don't let me into that saddle and make that jump, I'm going to have you confined to the darkest, smallest tip in that pit in that bloody mountain. And then he doesn't. And so she says, have him locked up wherever, whatever, uh, wherever he'll be the most miserable. And then she starts talking to Sorel, which is the the leader like she is, but of the other clan that I can't remember the name of. Iskra says, they say it's not the beasts, but the riders. Iskra is the leader of the yellow legs. And then Iskra says, give that to me, barked at someone. She, he just needs the right encouragement. And she whips him. Abraxas was huddling against the wall. The whip bloody from the line she sliced down his face, narrowly missing his eye. Manon hit the earth because she starts fighting Iskra. Her knuckles howled in pain, but all she could see was that whip. The pain in Abraxas' eyes. The fear. Ah, that hurts. I'm hurt. And then she says to Iskra, you touch him again and I'll drink the marrow from your bones because god damn it, she loves that beast. At some point, Petra's second come, uh, Petra, the leader of the other clan that I can't remember the name of, she comes down and says, my Keely caught this in the morning flight. It's meat because she knows that they don't let Abraxos and the 13 eat meat from inside of the mountain. And Petra says, I told you, my Keely wanted th to give this to him. And I just love it because I'm pretty sure they're mates. <laughs> but of course, Manon doesn't quite trust Petra just yet. And Manon threw the meat away, even though they're obviously starting a trustworthy relationship. But she's not ready. Then for on it. page 338, Selena says, my crown is just another set of sa shackles because she can't handle it. It's now the next day because I had to go to class and then this morning I went to the gym and such and now I'm sitting here and I'm gonna finish this before I go to work hopefully and maybe even upload it if I have time. So let's get started on so the So on page 342 we have some more Sorsha and Dorian stuff. So he genuinely wanted to give her things and he'd taken to giving her giving her hard to come by herbs and books and special tools for her workroom because she refused everything else. She says, my greatest wish is the for a morning when I don't have to run out the door at first light. And I just, they're cute. Not going to bother with flattery, he said, popping onto the couch because of Kale. Then Dorian tells Kale, you cannot pick and choose what parts of her to love, meaning Selena, just as you cannot pick which parts of me to accept, which is in reference to his magic. 
And then Kale says, if I could, I would put it all back the way it was. If I could, she wouldn't be queen and you wouldn't have and magic. And this is just continuing down that line of Kale is frustrating because, like, he can't accept what these, like, big things mean in the world, basically. Like, these two people are going to be very important, clearly. And he, like, just wants them to be back to what he thought his life was going to be, I guess change and wow. dorian puts him right in his place you do not have the right to wish you were not what she is the only thing you have a right to do is decide whether you are her enemy or her friend and that is why i do really love dorian so much we then are with adian and we're getting some information on rolf which is the pirate king we saw him during assassin's blade something standing on an outcropping of rocks just on the border of the eastern islands is where he hangs out and where Rolf said that whatever or whoever it was felt wrong. And it was made, they said, the creatures that we're talking about. And that this creature bore a black collar like a pet. So again, we're getting more information about like what is So going they're talking on. about like what to do next. And like the people, Narok is like that, the king's like army guy who has an army group that are probably all Valg and they've left and we don't really know where they went but we calls know Kale out and says the fact remains captain that you have not picked a side because you are still a boy and you are still afraid not of losing innocent lives but of losing whatever dream it is you're clinging to we also get some information that Emrys obviously knows a lot and he's a storyteller so the rage that Selena is feeling about what Maeve has done to Rowan throughout his life serving her she says the rage drove her to request legends from her about her aunt from Emrys every night. Rowan never reprimanded her when she asked for those stories and never showed any alarm. During this time, we also get she did catch a few females looking at him, meaning Rowan, with far warmer interest and she wanted to claw their faces off for it. And I wrote mates because mates. And then it says she had growled at a female in the kitchen who would not stop staring at him and had actually taken a step toward him as if to say hello. I'm like, freaking territorial beast, man. Yet Rowan remained beside her, murmuring as if she were a nervous horse. So this is during a scene where Rowan is making her, like, burn these flames at this, like, party type thing. And he wants her to burn them evenly for the entire night. And she gets, like, kind of entranced by it, and she is thinking to herself, what would happen if she walked through the flames? And he says, that's enough. And she could hardly hear him as if she were underwater. She couldn't look at him, didn't dare take her attention off the fire. Her throat was raw, burning. And then he says, if you don't let go, you are going to burn out completely. So this is where we find out that, like, when the Fae don't build their magic up, like going deep down inside of themselves, like I was talking about earlier, then they can burn out. So they, they talk about that and she almost burns herself out in this scene. So then Dorian gets her safe. She's saved, blah, blah, blah. And then if he's taking care of her and she says if, he, if she hadn't known any better, she might have thought he was f fussing, worried even. And I'm like... I put that under pink because I can't wait for them to finally be romantic because right now it's like friendly but like I'm reading it as romantic and then curled as she was against her knees he could see the whole expanse of ruined flesh each scar from the lashing so he finally sees her back and he asks who did that to you and this is when she finally tells him that she spent time as a slave in Endovir. Her back wasn't even close to some of those wounds, which is talking about Rowan's. His heart had clean stopped and for a moment there had been an overwhelming silence in his mind. He'd almost burned out completely, gods be damned, leaving her currently defenseless. Primal anger sharpened in his gut, brimming with territorial possessive need to keep her safe, essentially, because... He doesn't want to go back to Miss Word. Back Things he me. hardly needed to offer any encouragement to eat. She was starving, but if she didn't know better, she'd say he was fussing. So it's kind of weird they say that same line like a second time, but. Okay, cute. so then we get this interesting information. Um, Selena is asking Rowan, You mean to tell me that whenever someone comes close to burnout, she not only goes through all this misery, but if she's female, the males around her go berserk? So he's worried about taking her back to like the social area like the kitchens and stuff and he says that if they can't touch their magic they're vulnerable especially when they're drained and in pain that makes people usually males yes somewhat edgy others have been known to kill without thought any perceived threat real or otherwise and then we also get some information about the karanam which if you've read any sort of um the shadow hunters it reminds me a lot of the power bond 
Your car and Nam can yield their power to you as long as you're compatible and actively sharing a blood connection. And the majority of Fae never meet somebody who is compatible because there's always a threat that they could take too much. And if they're unskilled, that should, could shatter your mind. And then she says, tell me which of your little cadre is the handsomest and if he would fancy me. Rowan choked, the thought of you with any of my companions make, makes my blood run cold. Rowan mentions to Selena that a skilled healer could fix her back, the scars, and get rid of them. And there's this long passage where she basically says, like, I don't want to forget because I am Selena Serdothian. And that's all I could do in order to maintain my sanity in Endovir is remember who I am. And after I got out, there were nights when I would wake up and think I was back in those cells and I would have to light every candle in my room to prove I wasn't. They don't just kill you in the mines, they break you. And then she says that there are still thousands of slaves in Endovir. I will free them. So my scars serve as a reminder of that. Rowan <laughs> understands her so well. And he says, for whatever it's worth, I don't think you would destroy the world from spite. But I also think you like to suffer. You collect scars because you want proof that you are paying for whatever sins you've committed. And I know this because I've been doing Doing the same damn thing for 200 years Mur! he brushed a large hand down her hair and she almost purred after that which i put under pink and then he'd given selena with chocolates and she tried to embrace him and she'd snuck behind his chair at the work table planted a great smacking kiss on his cheek he'd waved her off and wiped his face with a snarl but had the suspicion that he'd let her get past his defenses i also put that whole thing in pink because it's cute but now we're back to manon manon had a plan with her 13 to go through the i can't remember what it's called but the big scary drop where abraxos needs to fly her across safely and they had a plan in order to like if she falls or if Abraxos can't make it, then they'll save her. But her grandmother had gotten wind of how they planned to save her and forbidden it. And so now they're trying to jump and Abraxos is refusing to move, not from fear or terror. He slowly lifted his head, looking to her grandmother, to where her grandmother stood and let out a low warning growl, a threat. And I freaking love that he doesn't trust. They'd heard the challenge in Abraxos' growl, understood that the beast had drawn a line in the sand. I put a little heart. And it says, you are mine and I am yours. Let's show them why. And they go. We also get this line on page 389 that there was nothing romantic about sharing a bed with Rowan and they kept to their own sides. There certainly was nothing romantic about it when they reached the side of the corpse and she peeled off blah, blah, blah. And I wrote, not yet. So he talks about sometimes mates can be together intimately before the bond snaps into place. And she says it's a useless hope to cling to anyway. And she was asking about her possibly being a mate with Kale. And he says, do you want to know the truth? And I said, does he already know that they're mates? Okay, moving on to page 414. Working with him, Selena was talking about Rowan, was so effortless. There was so no judgment, no need to explain herself, as if she could finally breathe after months of suffocating. But then she says, all five of your cadre even, it could turn the tide. But you have not sent for them. Why? And then he says, knew what I was doing when I drank her blood to seal the oath. And then he says, don't look at me like that. And he says, with disgust. But all of this just proves that she doesn't deserve you. I think you know that too, she says So to then him. we get this really depressing news. After Princess Nehemia is assassinated, a slave girl killed her overseer and sparked an uprising. And the soldiers went on the king of Ireland's orders and the soldiers killed every slave in Calcutta. And none were spared in Endovir either. Selena is like overwhelmed the people whom she had left behind whom she had let herself forget had let suffer who had prayed for salvation holding out hope that someone anyone would remember them they're all dead he murmured saw he murmured her name too softly for the others to hear and the name she did not deserve so he whispers aelin to her then adian starts yelling at kale i have been forced to do many many things depraved despicable things yet nothing made me feel as filthy as i did today thanking that men for murdering my people and he's talking about when the king of Ardalin told him that the people in calcala and and Dovir were killed we're in the royal theater and it took the boxes far longer to quiet than usual because they were still talking about the slaves and so they were still talking when the red curtains pulled back to reveal the seated orchestra and it was a miracle they bothered to applaud for the conductor as he hobbled across the stage. 
Every musician on the stage was wearing mourning black. Oh my god. Ow! And then the song of Finn Harrow and Melisande and Terrace in each nation that had people in those labor camps. And then they played the song of Ardolin. And the next morning, by royal decree, the theater was shut down and no one saw those musicians or their conductor again. Selena claims Rowan as his friend, as her friend. He thinks it doesn't matter, you will walk out of Maeve's realm alone. So we get a flashback to when Selena was a child and after her parents died and we get information that Alid's mother is the one who saved her she sacrificed herself so that Selena could run away and then we realize that the king of Ardolin had come that weekend and everything had seemed fine and so there was never any real assumption that the king had anything to do with the assassination but then they realized the whole thing had been orchestrated he had done it to separate her family to take the blame away from Arlen and make it look like an outside attack but the king had planned it all and so she finally figures that and then out on page 473 we get this scene where Rowan does the Karanam thing to say to help Selena and he slices his palm open as he sprinted to the gatestone and she had suspected it for some time now they were Karanam and then I wrote even better mates and he whispered into her ear I claim you too Aelin Galathinius. Ow it hurts. We get this scene where Kale says to Sorcia that this kingdom could use a healer as its queen and he's just I love Sorcia so much. Ow. Okay now we come to this more like kind of figuring information out. We we find out that Selena knows where the third and final word key was. It had been around her neck the night she fell into the river. The word keys weren't inherently bad or good, and the one that she had 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 been unknowingly used for good and had protected its bearers for millennia in Terrason. And Arben Hamel had taken it from her and kept it all these years, a prize whose power he had never guessed. Selena the talks to Emerus and says, when I reclaim my kingdom, the demi Fae will always have a home there as my friends. And then he says, your mother would be proud. So then we find out from Murtaugh, he's speaking to Adian, that Selena saved a great number of people with magic. Fire, they say, power the likes of which the world has not seen since Brandon himself. And it was a message to the world that she was okay, ready. Okay, so now Selena meets Maeve to show what her magic is and such. Talks about the Valg and says, There are many different races. They are ruled by the princes who themselves are made of shadow and despair and hatred and have no bodies to occupy save those that they infiltrate. We also find out that Brandon was born with the bastard's mark. Each of Brandon's heirs, despite their noble lineage, has since been graced with it, the nameless mark. The reek of the vow had been in her parents' bedroom the morning after they'd been murdered, she realizes, and she didn't know what that meant then, but she's figured it out now. With all three keys, the king could or open the portal at will. He might not need to rely on magically gifted hosts for the vow. He would not need the collars with all three keys. His control would be absolute. And then we also find out that it would seem that the king has at least one, probably two, but you have some inkling of the third one's whereabouts, don't you? Maeve asks her. Maeve brings out a whip for Rowan. At the sight of the iron-tipped whip, Selena forgot to breathe. Maeve is basically threatening Rowan because she wants information about the word key. And she says, not for all the world, Aelin, but what about for Prince Rowan? And Selena opened her mouth, but Rowan lifted his head and says, don't. It was that word of defiance that broke the hold she'd kept on herself for the past day. She knew the gold in her eyes had shifted to flame because when she looked to Maeve, the queen's face had gone bone wet, white, and then Selena set the world on fire. So Selena threatens to burn the entire city and all of its people because Maeve is threatening Rowan and Maeve says that my castle won't fall because it's stone and she says but your people aren't. She says you've known from the start that I have very little of Mab's power. You wanted to know how much I got from Brannon. Figures out that Maeve never gave the keys to Brannon. Brannon was the one who hid them and he burned any trace of himself, any clue of where he was going so that you would not find him. And then she realized, she says, my magic was so strong at the start. So in this scene, Rowan is released from Maeve's bond because Galen has all the power and is controlling it and tells her to. And then right in front of Maeve, she asks Rowan to be her blood oath person. And so she asks him and he says, yes. And Maeve is pissed. And then we move on and we realize that Rowan has given Selena a tattoo that he had helped um, sketch it for her. Then we come back to Manon and Iskra is being an asshole. Purple almost kills Keely. Keely is Petra's Ravern, which is the one that wanted to bring Neat to Abraxos, and Keely dies. 
and Abraxos refuses to dive because he's watching Keeley plummet. And so he couldn't stop Keeley, but they could save Petra. So Manon could have sworn that he was speaking some alien language, bellowing some command, because Abraxas roars at Keeley. And all she could see was the unconditional love. Oh my god. Ow, it hurts! All she could see was the unconditional love in that dying Reverend's eyes as she unbuckled her harness, stood from the saddle, and leapt off Abraxas. Because as Keeley is dying, she's staying straight so that Petra doesn't fall off. As Ow. punishment for Manon, because Manon does not do what she's told, and instead she saves Petra. Ow. We find out that, um... The matron has had a croaking person that they have been holding captive. And so the croaking says, my murder is at your hands. It is a reminder, not to them, but to you, a reminder of what they made you to be. They made you this way. We pity you. They were, they are not born evil, but you force them to kill and hurt and hate until there is nothing left inside them of you. Because the threat that you pose to that monster you call a grandmother is what she says to Manon, which is because she's a freaking croakin queen. Manon kills the croakin and gets a new um, cloak, but like is second guessing why the, the her grandmother wanted her to do that. And then we shift to Adian and Kale, and Kale gets a summons to the King of Ardalan, and everything is going to go to shit at the end of this book. So let's get to it. We are almost done. We are on page 540. Dorian is trying to get Sorsha out the castle because he knows she's in danger, but the healer who is in charge stops them and says the king wants to see you both in his chambers immediately. They have Adian in cuffs, but Kale is not in cuffs. Kale gets Adian out, but during that same scene, they shop Sorsha's head off. And Dorian, still screaming, was scrambling. <laughs> God, everything hurts. <laughs> He was still scrambling through the blood toward it, toward her head, as if he could put it back, as if he could piece it all to her back together. Dorian uses his magic in this scene because he's pissed and he's hurt and he's destroyed. And then the King of Ardalan pulls out a collar and puts it around K Dorian's neck. Ah! So he is now collared. This ah. line in this book, and then I am going to rattle the stars, Selena says. And that's the book. It ends with Rowan getting out of Maeve's group and into Selena as a blood oaf. We get Ma Manon is still fine. Abraxas is still fine. And still like under grandma's hand a little bit, but also like clearly starting to distrust her. And then of course, sad, sad Dorian. Sorsha was murdered in this book, which is really depressing. I really loved Sorsha and I'm like very disappointed that she was not the end game and I don't like what happens next with Dorian as far as romantic stuff goes, but I do really like where this, like where his story goes, I guess. Ends with hope because Selena is finally accepting of where she belongs and who she is and she's ready to rattle the stars and Adian's okay and Kale's okay. Dorian's still alive even though he's destroyed. But Dorian also has a collar on now, so that's a whole new problem. He's not okay. <laughs> he is now being controlled by the king is what we assume there. That's the end of the book. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. I'm really enjoying doing these, so let me know if you have any recommendations for what you want to see more of, less of, etc. in these style of videos. Um, I should be doing Queen of Shadows sometime this month in September. So yeah, the live show for Queen of Shadows is on September 19th at 11.30 a.m. PST. I will see you guys very soon with a new one. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. I make videos every Thursday and Saturday, usually, hopefully, sometimes, I don't know. And yeah, I will see you guys very soon with a new one. Bye! Don't hit, forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Bye!